Yes, you read that thumbnail correctly. It's a $55 audio interface. But how good could it possibly be? Let's find out. It's 20% nerdy stuff, and it's coming right up. So, good day, and welcome to the Time Preservation Society. I'm Joe Black. Meet me. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can be notified the minute new content drops. Cheers. This is going to be a short video, I think, because I'm going to get right to the nitty gritty immediately. Fine Fine is a budget audio product company from China that has made its way into many YouTube channels due to its incredibly low cost products and easy access to them through Amazon. When Fine Fine contacted me asking if I would like to review an audio interface that was below $60, I was all like, no. But I said that in my mind. But before a minute had passed, I decided to agree to do it because there are a lot of you watching right now that would desperately like to make music or create content and haven't the funds to do that. Trust me, I've been there. I lived there for a very long time, and I'll never forget it. So let's see what this $55 interface is all about and see what we can do with it. We will start by looking at it. Right off the bat, I can tell you that this thing is notably light. Like, really, really light. It weighs 244 grams. I weighed it easily with my milligram scale. It's made entirely out of plastic, the kind of plastic that you don't want to drop, though being so lightweight, I feel as if it would, you know, take a while to hit the ground. Definitely don't record outside with more than a light breeze. It uh, may take flight. On the front, we have one XLR input, a phantom power switch, another switch to toggle between the XLR port and the quarter inch instrument port, which is the next thing I'm pointing out now. The quarter-inch input is for your guitar or bass, or for half of a stereo keyboard. Then we've got a headphone jack, a headphone volume dial, and a switch that allows for direct monitoring, which you're going to need. Direct monitoring is where you choose to monitor the audio you're recording right from the interface as opposed to, you know, from your computer. It's for low latency monitoring. On the top, we've got three dials. The first dial is your mic gain dial. The second is your instrument gain dial. And the last is the volume dial for your external self-powered studio monitors, if you have some. On the back, we've got your left and right quarter-inch studio monitor outputs and a USB-C port to connect it to your computer. The SC1 comes with a USB-C cable that also has a USB-A adapter built into it. I'd also like to note that they even included a good quality cable wrap. That was very thoughtful, Fine Fine. They've also included a rather thorough instruction booklet that folds out. It's got everything you need to know in there. It's also in full color and on semi-gloss paper. Another nice touch, since many much more expensive audio products tell you to go to their site to download instructions. And that's it. Some quick specs for you. It records with the sample rates of either 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. It has a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, as usual. It has 45 decibels of gain, which is not enough to power an SM7B or other low-powered mics, but is fine for a condenser mic. It measures... Oh, hold on a second. Let me find my trusty old measuring tape here. You know... This measuring tape was handmade by a third-generation oil driller named Harry Stamper. I picked it up on an asteroid that was on a collision course with Earth back in 98. Anyway. It measures 5.5 inches wide, 4 inches deep, and 1.5 inches tall. I recorded myself on the SC-1 using a Shure SM57 to listen to the sound and the noise. Then I recorded myself on the Universal Audio Apollo Twin X just to hear a comparison. Here are those recordings. Okay, so you're hearing me on the Fine Fine Ampli Tank SC-1. 
I've got this going directly into my Mac. Uh, I'm using a Shure SM57, a low-cost microphone, but I'm also using a very expensive cable. It's the V2 cable, uh, just to rule out any, you know, cable noise. And, uh, yeah, maxed right out. I'm also maxed out on the headphones. Um, it's very, it's not very loud. Uh, the headphone amp in here is very, it's very quiet, which could be a problem. Uh, anyway, this is the sound. Let's hear some silence. All right, so now you're hearing me on the Apollo Twin X by Universal Audio. I'm using the same microphone, the Shure SM57, and also the same cable, which is the V2 cables that I use. And uh, that's it. This is the sound. So let's hear the silence. A Shure SM57, the Shure SM57. The Fine Fine Amplitank SC1 was released, I think, back in 2023, which was Poor Things and Killers of the Flower Moon ago. And you already know, it's only $55 to own this. So what do I think of it? Well, it's small, it's light, it works, so it has all that going for it. But it's also so small and light so that some XLR cables will literally keel it over when you plug it in. You'd have to 3M that shit to keep it flat on your desk. The preamps are weak and noisy. The headphone amp is weak and noisy. The plastic body is so cheap feeling that it feels like it was made with an entry-level 3D printer, a used one. It really needs that direct monitoring button it has because the latency with software monitoring is insane. Even with the buffer in my DAW at 64 samples, it was just, it was, it was hard. So you definitely need to monitor it, your, what you're, you're singing or playing or, or, or talking into with that button turned on so you're monitoring right from the unit. Uh, but the dials feel pretty good. I mean, that was unexpected. The dials feel good to dial. I mean, just, it's right here. Like, look, it feels dialy. It's so, so, so dialy. Hello, dials. Anyway, they're good dials. Uh, the LED rings around the dials are also cool. I should say that. Those little rings here that light up. They're, uh, they're good. They're good. It's a mono input device, so you can't really grow with it. If you're a beginner and into music, you will eventually want stereo, and there is no way to upgrade that. So, um, so there's that. You can only use the XLR input or the quarter inch input at a time, not both at the same time. So that's important to know. After I tested the unit and played with it for a bit, but before I wrote this review, I watched a few other reviews on YouTube to see what they were saying. All the ones I watched were positive reviews that talked highly about this product. It was at that moment that I had to ask myself, self, number one, are these reviewers on the take? And two, if so, why wasn't I offered any money to say positive things? Like, no envelope full of cash was casually slid over the tabletop to me. What gives? I mean, are these guys actually selling their souls for a free $55 interface? And then it hit me. No, none of these guys know anything about audio. They're video guys or streamers or gamers or podcasters or something. So their reviews are from the perspective of the, you know, a green end user. But I must say, if you only have $55 and no prospect of saving $55 more for like an Evo or something like that, and you need to make it work, you could. Because you can do anything with anything. As long as it works well enough, you can do anything. Don't believe me? Listen. She wanted a cheap interface. So I drove her But 
Crappy plastic Tonka, not the old, really cool metal kind. That was entirely recorded on the Fine Fine Amplitank SC1, one track at a time, with a single Shure SM57 and a bass guitar plugged straight in. It's more about knowledge and experience and knowing what to do, and, and less about the gear. I know when you're first starting out, you think I need to have all this great gear. Trust me, I've done all that. I still, I still do it. But the end thing is that you kind of find out that all along you're building all this knowledge that if you went back to that original gear you got and then tried to do the same thing, you go, oh, I, I guess I could have made it work with this too. So you can do anything with anything, as long as it works and it's not like, or something like that. So do I recommend the Fifine SC1? Not if you want to grow with an interface, but if you only had $55 and you didn't need a stereo input, but you need to record something mono like a podcast or a stream, then it will totally do the job. But if you could save up a little more and go for a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 or an Audient Evo 4, then you're really getting into the game. And those interfaces have stereo XLR ends and weigh enough that a mic cable won't tip it over. Well, that'll just about do it for all of me here at the Time Preservation Society. Just remember, lightning could strike. Bye now, and transmission. <laughs> yes. Click this circle here where my finger is. Yes. That way, that way you can subscribe. Thank you very much. See you later, guys. <laughs>